If you're one of those people who has lots of problems and you tend to go on forums or like community groups, Reddit, Elemental Global, could be anywhere, and you just say, I've got a problem, I don't know what to do, I need you to help me out with it. Why have you not considered using a bit of AI? So let me give you a bit of history as to what I'm talking about here. In the old days, when we had to go to the library, and I am nearly 46 years old, I didn't have my first mobile phone until I was 21 years old. Prior to that, I was going to the library. I didn't start using the internet until I was about 18 years old. That would have been 1990... I'm getting my dates really wrong here now, 96, 97, whatever, okay? So that's when I started using the internet. Prior to that, you went to the library or you had to speak to someone or find someone who kind of had an idea about the topic you were researching or you wanted to know more about. Then the internet came along, obviously. And even then, if you were learning SQL or learning some sort of programming language, you might still need to go to a forum because you were kind of going, how do I convert this text into a number for SQL data mining query analyzer? Stuff like that, you know what I mean. Or if you were learning HTML. But then we had the explosion of AI in the last couple of years. Chat GPT, Claw, Gemini. There's loads of things out there and there's more to even mention or list at all. But why are you not using that for when you want to kind of discuss or solve some of your problems? And I'm going to talk about some examples and how you can massively help yourself out. And I'm not picking fault with whether you use AI or not, but I want you to consider how you can get more efficient answers for your bespoke solution. By the way, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I love to help people and businesses get the most out of WordPress, Elementor and other page builders because I want you to do your best. And did you know that today's video is sponsored by Kinsta? I want you to imagine your WordPress website running its own private VIP section. No noisy neighbors and no interruptions. That's what you get with Kinsta's isolated container technology. Each site has its own dedicated CPU and RAM. So your site performs at its best always. We're not talking about shared hosting here. This is your site's own private party. With Kinsta, you get power, performance, and peace of mind, all wrapped up in a cutting edge package. Give your site the VIP treatment it deserves with Kinsta. And when it comes to peace of mind, this is the reason why you need to start using a little bit of AI. Look, on the Elemental Global Community Group and other community groups, and even the Web Squadron Facebook group, people might post an image or a question and they go, I need to know how to do this. I need to know how to solve this problem. I'm doing X, Y, Z, and I need a code or a bit of CSS or something to do this. And that's it, they just stop. Sometimes the questions aren't even anywhere near that detail. And it's literally just a screenshot. And all you get is a question that says, how do I do this? And you sit there kind of thinking, have you even bothered inspecting the page? You know, you can right click a page and go to inspect or even view the page source. Remember the page source bit, I'm gonna come back onto that. So if you need to find the class name or kind of understand a bit of the CSS or styling that someone might apply, go and do an inspection. But that's if you wanna kind of grab details out of a web page. Now I mentioned the page source. Let's say you've gone to a website and they've got some sort of like slider where they've got a fancy feature on there and you're going, well, they're using Elementor. Maybe they're using Gutenberg or they're using something. How did they do that? And when you inspect it or from what you can tell, they're not using a third party plugin. So this was all done within WordPress or Elementor or whatever. How did they do it? Go and right click and get the page source. And it might be really big. If it's really big, you got to deal with it. And you got to hope that your AI system can handle it too. But what you want to do is get it, copy it, and paste it into ChatGPT. And then say to ChatGPT or whatever, look at this code. Inside of here, there is an element or an item or a container. And if you've done your inspection, you'll know that that container might have been called Imran Web Squadron. Let's pretend that's what the class name was for that container. Tell me how, or sorry, not tell me, can you strip out the code, the div, the style, the script for that container. And it will then give it to you. And what you then do is you copy that into a blank WordPress page and you should get a full on replication. 
Unless it's pulling off loads of special JavaScript libraries that you can't access, and most of the time you can access them, it will give you a copy. And if you now know that kind of gave you what you wanted, you then go back to ChatGPT and you say, now let's refine it. Now I want to do X, Y, Z. And believe it or not, AI will give you that solution. And the amount of times I've helped people out because they've literally said, I saw this on a website, how do I do it? It's pretty clear you haven't even bothered to just strip it out and have an experimentation with yourself. And that's where you're trying to imitate something on another website. But what if you've just got a general question? I need a code snippet to do X. I need to know how to stylize um, an icon or an image box. I need to know how to do da 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 da. If you, before you post onto a Facebook group or another forum, just take your question and stick it into ChatGPT, it might not give you the exact answer you want, or it might do, but it's going to give you an inkling of how you now need to refine your question or think about other stuff, or maybe it's going to give you exactly what you need. Because if you just give the basics for what you want, a lot of people may answer and they may do their damnedest to give you the best answer they can. And, but you may not have given them the right detail. So what you got to think about is, did you ask the right question? Because if you're not asking the right question, you're not going to get the right answer. And what I really think people should do when it comes to using AI is start to take a step back and just think about your question, okay? If you go into, say, uh, a takeaway store and you say, um, I want a takeaway, they're not going to serve you anything. They're going to go, well, what do you want? And then you might go, oh, I want something with chips. And they're going to go, well, what do you want with chips? And you're going to go, oh, I want something that I can eat. And they go, what do you mean? Okay, so we know you want something from the takeaway. We know you want it with chips. We know you want something to eat. Um, I want it to be spicy. Okay, great. We've got Donna kebab. We've got this. We've got that. What else do you want? Oh, it's got to have gravy. Well, okay, we haven't got a spicy Donna kebab with gravy, but we could drop the gravy in. Maybe a steak and kidney pie. Puck a steak and kidney pie. We could give you one of them. If you start to refine the question you're asking ChatGPT, all right, I keep saying ChatGPT, and I'm sorry because I know a lot of you use other solutions as well, and there's loads out there, but I'm using that as an example. If you start to ask the right question, you're going to get a much better answer. And don't be afraid of breaking down your question. There are times where I will literally write, you must be aware that Elemental have a taxonomy filter. Inside of that taxonomy filter, I have four parents and here they are and I list them. I have also got children and here they are. And then I will maybe clarify which child relates to which parent. I've probably done that in the first bit. I will then say, do you understand that? Say yes. And then ChatGPT will say yes. I haven't even asked it what I want it to do. I'm just feeding it the details. I will then clarify and go, I am now going to give paste below a page source of an example where I've got that. I've got a blank page, nothing on it except a very basic loop grid and the taxonomy filter with the same parent and child filters. And I paste it and I say, say yes if you understand. And again, it says yes. Then I say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what I cannot do inside the standard styling or setting layout features with inside Elementor or WordPress, whatever. I want to do X, Y, Z. And that is the point when ChatGPT will get thinking and it will churn something out. I'll try it. It don't work. I'll then re-clarify my question. It works, but it did X and Y but not Z. So that's when you go back and refine again. And if you are very clinical in your questions, you will get to where you want. Because the point I'm trying to make, because there was actually a point to all of this, is that if you start there and go, taxonomy filter, I want to do X, Y, Z, someone is probably going to come up with an answer. And then you're going to go back and say, no, that's not what I want. What I meant was A, B, C. And then someone else comes with an answer and you go, no, no, no. What I meant was X, Y, Z. Well, you are now expecting other people for free to give you lots of answers, a bit of handholding, a bit of back and forth. And sometimes there comes a point where some of us, we kind of go, right, look, I've done my best I'm doing this for free. There's other stuff I want to get on with. I'm going to go away and do that. And then the person asking the question gets upset 
sends you a direct message or goes, why have you not helped me out? Why have we not finished the answer? I told you what I want. I'm not indebted to you. Neither are you indebted to me, unless someone's paid some commission or anything. But with AI, in the last two years, I think there's no excuse for not having a go. And I would prefer it if someone kind of posted a question and said, I did use AI, and this is where I got to, or this is where it fell over, or this is what I used. Here's the code, here's the JavaScript, here's the CSS. So if someone's going to pick it up, they can actually, they've got something to use. In fact, can I be really blunt here and say, when you post an image in any forum, and you say, I want to replicate X, don't just put a screenshot, actually put the URL to the page, actually put something that gives us something to latch onto, all right? Just like Vol just like Harry Potter, you know, uh, Voldemort's life latched onto him. You know, give us something to inspect and go into because it means that we might be able to give you a better answer. But the point of the video is to say, hey, I'm Imran Web Squad and like, subscribe, share and follow. But the second point is when you have a question, have a go with AI because you will surprise yourself and you're probably going to get an answer that eventually with the right prompts is going to achieve your aim and your goal. Take care. See you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings.